Um, my name is Wout. I'm the founder and CEO of Deep6 AI. And we are a uh, healthcare information technology company, right, as we call it. We're building a SaaS platform that connects all these stakeholders in clinical trials on a real time, real world data um, application. Two, one of two broad categories. Either you start a company because you know about a problem that you want to solve, you have a deep experience with a certain industry, and you know the problems, and then you come up with a solution, or you start a company because you have a skill or a capability um, that is mostly focused on a solution, in our case, like AI, right, and ML, and then you pick the right problem to solve. We fell in that latter category. And by doing all of those interviews, we could kind of say, okay, um, we know we have a solution, but what is the best problem that we want to solve with that? And we used a bit of a framework to kind of stack rank all of those different problems and say, where should we play? And we did it based on how big is the total addressable market? How big is the problem? Is there a standalone solution that we can do so we don't just become another app or algorithm that really folds up into an EMR or another software system? But can we go to market alone? Is the market still pretty fragmented? So we know that we can actually become a big player there. Um, and do we feel we have a very strong and compelling ROI story? And there's a couple of other components as well. But that allows us to kind of really narrow down the different places where we wanted to play. And we felt like the clinical trial problem was so big, it was so huge, that it was really a good market for us to, to start in. And back in 2016, when we did this analysis, almost nobody was talking about clinical trials. These days, everybody's talking about it, held by our, our little pandemic that we're in, but also just by general sentiment from investors and any other companies playing in this field. We try to do is basically get life-saving treatments to patients and market faster and, and in the process accelerate innovation in healthcare as a whole. As, as you may know, every new drug treatment or device right, in our healthcare system has to be tested to make sure that it's safe and that it works before it can go to market. That is through a process called clinical trials. Right, where you have like a A-B testing of, of in the treatment. The problem is that this kind of a gatekeeper, which is a very necessary and important process, has become a bottleneck because it's so old fashioned, it's so manual, it's so devoid of digital data transformation in the process that it's taking very, very many days, weeks and months to even find or identify patients for trials. As a result, nearly 90% of clinical trials go significantly over time on budget, right? And many of them fail. So we try to resolve that by basically doing digital transformation of the whole clinical trial process. Most of our innovations are on the technical side. And then there's a couple of innovations we tried on the business model side as well. But on the technology side, typical information systems at healthcare organizations today use relational databases, right? Oracle, SQL, databases, et cetera, where all the information is structured. So you have to have a label for each point, like this is a diagnosis, right? This is a medication, this is a patient name, et cetera. And then all of those are stored in tables and rows. And it's pretty hard to make those work because you have to kind of do joins. It's, it's a lot of ETL work, right? It's a, a lot of data wrangling to bring them together. What we do is we have a very different approach. We don't just rely on the structured data, like those limited number of fields that have labels. We can go with all of the notes, all of the unstructured data, like text and stuff in there. And we use NLP to recognize in that text, in the, the physician's notes that he takes when he interviews a patient, all of the relevant clinical concepts. We can kind of say, what is the chief complaint? What is the diagnosis? What are the symptoms? What are the, the, the diagnosis, the prognosis? What are the medications that have been ordered, right? What are the outcomes from those things? We recognize everything that is clinical in there and also some social determinants and other things and, and genomic mutations, everything. And then instead of pushing those into a regular relational database, we represent a patient as a graph. What that means is a patient becomes an n-dimensional or multi-dimensional vector that has all of those clinical concepts that we pull from all the different records. So it's very complete across all the systems. And it's an ideal sofa or subject of analysis because a graph is easy to add data to. All you have to know is have a patient's identity and identifying unique number like an MRN. And then you can add more other source data to it. And what you can see is not only a collection of all those clinical findings that we pulled from the, the patient notes, you can also see the relationships between them. You can kind of see like how many patients that have A, B, C, and D also have F. And if we see like well, 87% of patients that have A, B, C, and D also have F, we can start doing probabilistic inferences for other patients like it and kind of see how long does it take for the first symptoms of F to materialize and stuff. So it gives you way more insight and it allows you to actually come up with new hypotheses. And that's something that's much harder to do with traditional software. What we are doing, and that goes back to the other side of the innovation, more on the business model side, right? 
as I mentioned before, we're building kind of an ecosystem that connects all the major stakeholders in clinical trials on one software platform, right? That is that real-time, real-world data platform. And for each of those stakeholders, we have specific digital workflows to help them collaborate and move the clinical trials or accelerate clinical trials from the point of inception to the point of completion through kind of feasibility, trial optimization, site selection, PI selection, patient recruitment, data collection, et cetera, right? So um, if you look at all of the stakeholders, many of them exist on the healthcare organization side, the hospital side, where you have the research teams. They're the ones who are going to have the PI, the principal investigator, and the research team. They're going to execute on the trial, right? So we help them find patients for their study. We also augment their efforts by connecting them with the care team, the actual physicians and nurses that are providing treatment to the patients because they have the, gr the greatest interaction with patients. So the greatest opportunity to refer patients to a clinical trial also because they have that trust relationship. So we have a second product that's actually specific to them so they can refer patients to the trials that those research people are running. And then right now we're working on um, having a patient facing solution as well, which is free for patients. So they can kind of consider trials as another option or as another avenue to take more control of their own health journey. So that's all kind of on the um, healthcare organization side. On the other side, you have the life sciences companies, biotech, pharma, medical devices. They're the ones who are trying to bring their drugs to market or their treatments to market, right? So they're the sponsors of the clinical trials. And we have a solution for them as well, where they can publish information about their studies across our network. They can help select sites and PIs that have really good performance and a good track record, right? And then they can track and help drive the um, recruitment and data collection, et cetera. So we really try to connect all of those stakeholders together to collaborate and accelerate across that whole value chain. Yeah, so we, we have some of the, the big names in clinical trials, right, in healthcare, like MD Anderson, just one of the biggest research organizations in the world and number one cancer center. We have Cedar sinai here as our first client in Los Angeles. Uh, we signed up with the Texas Medical Center with a lot of the other participating groups there waiting to deploy there, the Houston Methodist and the Baylor College of Medicine and these groups, they're a very strong partner. Then we have a Rutgers, um, more on your side of the country. We have Wachner, we, we have uh, University of Cleveland. Um, we have a lot of the big names there. I think we're right now at about um, 15 different health centers. So we're building a very robust um, ecosystem with big names in, in research and growing that rapidly. The, the emphasis on COVID-19 studies and clinical research to bring this vaccine to market has increased awareness of clinical trials. And it also has shown that, that clinical trials, the way they used to be run in the past, they were very vulnerable and they're not crisis robust. So there is more openness now to do things better and to go to what we've been promoting forever, crisis robust, high performance trials. So I do believe that we're seeing that now. And we're a couple of years ago, up until maybe even 2019, we had to do true market development before we could do business development and sales, i.e. we had to tell people why this was a new thing that's important. Now the market is kind of caught up. And now we actually have RFPs being issued for our kind of solution. And health systems see that this is a must-have tool for them to actually play in the clinical research um, industry, right, in this day and age. Depends on how you define competition, right? I mean, there, there's a famous saying that Coca-Cola doesn't just look at Pepsi. They, they believe water is a competitor to them because anything you drink can compete with you. Clinical trial recruitment and acceleration happens in many shapes and forms as well. You have the more traditional services like CROs that are actually almost manually recruiting patients, reaching out to them, do more like social media campaigns or flyers and stuff and do that. To an extent, they are a competitor, but really they're also a client of ours. They can also use our software to accelerate their own services. Then if you look more narrowly at companies that are also doing software, there's a couple of other companies that are doing this, um, not really with our type of technology, like those knowledge graphs and, and really using unstructured data, but you had other companies and other initiatives, like one was an open source initiative it's called I2B2, looking at the structured data alone to try to share data and build a bit of an ecosystem. Um, IBM Watson originally also tried to do something like what we were doing. They were not that successful. I feel like they, they had some bad press around their solution. I think they just exited the market a couple of months ago because they couldn't really solve the technology there. Um, and then I believe there's a couple of of those bigger companies trying to build their own technology, but typically more as data aggregators and sticking to the structured data than going deep into the unstructured data. 
um, add more systems to, to our, our network, right? And we're doing that and, and seeing good success there, connecting them more. So we really become that collective medical intelligence for clinical research, where you have that big data baseline to compare yourselves against. We're already actually, we, we've built now a new platform that allows us to also scale down. So we don't just have to sell into the big AMCs or academic medical centers. We can also work with, with community centers, et cetera. We want to help boost trial diversity and give access to clinical trials for a more diverse social um, demographic across the US. And, and we're willing to, to really do that at, at no cost um, if, if we can accelerate that process, right, of, of helping diversity. We also, to do that, actually want to have a patient-facing solution, like I mentioned before. And then we're now actually starting, I mean, we've built up a really good supply side of our marketplace. We're now starting to work with the demand side or all the sponsors to have them on our platform as well. And as we do that, inevitably, we'll probably start to have to look overseas as well and build out that ecosystem, not just in the US, but in some of the other big clinical trial centers across the world. It's really good at helping me pinpoint decisions at the point of care. If you think about big data, it helps you solve the denominator problem, right? If you see a patient with big data, you can compare that patient to many other patients. Like you have a denominator against that. What artificial intelligence can do on top of that, it can help you recognize kind of the numerator. If you see that patient, does this patient look more like this or that? It kind of helps you pinpoint. Based on that, now you have both a numerator and a denominator. You can really kind of refer and have better decisions or support decisions by physicians who may not have access to all of the data points in a short moment of interaction with the patient or in all of the other patients that look like that. So you can really drive decisions and give more of a framework to optimize the decisions that are being made about what type of care to give to this patient, right? How to diagnose, um, what type of treatments to give, how to track outcomes, what type of prognosis, et cetera. And I believe at first we will see that this will be an enhancement for the physicians and the care staff. So they have more information to base their decisions on. Eventually, I believe that that information will also be available to the patient. And so they can kind of become more of a team and work together on their treatment plan, built from the ground up with safety and security in mind. I mean, trust me, a company like us, we cannot afford having like a, a critical event or something where we have anything wrong with the data, we'd be out of business. So where we spoke about innovating in terms of our AI and our patient matching and stuff, we try to do the same thing with our platform. We've really invested deep in that and having a federated system where all the data points are siloed, right? In spokes that don't talk to each other. So they're all kind of isolated uh, from each other. They're highly secured. They're typically behind the firewalls and VPNs from the health systems. We don't have to own the data, et cetera. And we thought about many ways of, of basically safeguarding that. We also have very complex um, access controls to make sure that only the right person can see the right data at the right amount in time. And there's like honest data broker reviews of that. We have extensive auditing and there's easy ways to shut that off. Um, that was kind of, again, we, we spent a lot of time designing that before we could even build our application on top of that platform.